Hey, Kevin here, top 100 financial advisor and best-selling author, and we are here to talk about the stock market. Today was moving day. Today was the day that I made some moves in my portfolio. I shaked up some things just a little bit here and there to really tweak and improve for 2022. So today I want to go over what were the things that were moved, why they were moved, if they were moved at all. And there were some things that I absolutely kept, even though they de didn't do as well as I expected. And I'll give you some logic and some of the, the reasoning and thought process behind why I'm keeping some and why I'm switching others out. All right. So two of these, you probably already know, you know, I got rid of Square, which we named itself Block. And I, again, one of the biggest reasons I got rid of is because Yes, they lost money. That is absolutely true. But the entire sector, for whatever reason, and I still have not found it, I've been looking ever since, has absolutely fallen off. So I had someone on, on Instagram say, well, you know, they changed their name and this happened, this happened. And that's true, right? That that would make sense for Square. But then it has nothing to do with PayPal. It has nothing to do with Visa. That was kind of blah. Um, nothing to do with a firm. And our firm had its own legal issues and some things happened there. But all of those those payment stocks just all fell off right around the same time in July and just haven't really recovered. I've had Square for almost a year, if not more than a year. And I said, look, this is it's time. I, I gotta let it go. I, I gotta let it go and, and find something I think is better. So I actually replaced Square with a REIT, uh, Real Estate Investment Trust called PLD. Prologis is the the entire name of the company. They are, um, again, they, this, they invest in real estate primarily for logistics companies and and manufacturers. So Walmart is the biggest, one of their biggest customers. Amazon, the US government is one of their biggest customers as well as Home Depot. And they, the way that their company works is basically, if I'm Home Depot, if I'm Amazon, and I need to have all of these places built and I need to lease this, this space to make sure that all of my shipping, uh, you know, vans I got from Rivian are getting to places on time. I need to rent a space or buy a space. I'm going to get it from Prologis. That's pretty much how it works. If y'all want a, a deeper, de deeper, detailed version of what this REIT is and how it works, then feel free to let me know. It's up more than 70% in the last year and up about 30 or so percent in the last six months. But one reason that, that I got it is one for diversification. I've got a little bit of tech. I've got Target. I've got some other things. Well, I actually have a lot a bit of tech. So I wanted to kind of diversify a bit. But also for what we expect for 2022, we expect rates to go up and REITs do well. Real estate investment trusts tend to do well when REITs go up. So that kind of helps to protect me in some ways. But also it's had solid performance. I don't really see them slowing down for any reason. So we're going to go ahead and add them in June. I'll come back and see whether we were right or wrong. We'll see, right? Um, but it has done well in the recent past, and they seem to be set up quite well for the future. So Square is gone. Um, Prologis is in. And also Disney is gone. Absolutely got rid of Disney, even though I like Disney as a company. I divorced my emotions from this company. I had to. I like ESPN. I'm going to watch the Alabama-Cincinnati game in the next four minutes if I can wrap this video up and watch it on time. And, uh, you know, they've... They, you got Spider-Man No Way Home did incredibly well. Shang-Chi did well. Um, you're looking at expanding the playoffs in 2023. You're looking into the metaverse. There are a lot of really good reasons to like Disney. But I'm not going to sit here and continue to lose money while they figure it out. When and if Disney starts to bottom out and come back up, then I'll, I'll come back and consider Disney. But not right now. I've held Disney for 322 days and still lost money. But it ain't for me no more. Okay, right now it is not for me. And I, I was, I said this when I picked up Disney. I was like, I'm a little afraid because I held Disney like back in 2013, 2014. Held it for like five years and it did absolutely nothing. I got rid of it. Disney Plus launch, it takes off, and it goes right back to doing nothing again. So hey, I got rid of it. I think into it. Take a symbol I N T U will do a whole lot better than Disney at least in the short term. They do, um, well, first they own Credit Karma. They own a lot of this, the tax software that you guys see that you are really going to see come Super Bowl season and all that stuff. So I think, one, they've been solid for quite some time. They've been a very, very quality company for a good, good bit of time as well. Um, I actually did a cram review on this for cram sessions. I'll put that link here. And we did a really, I would say almost 20 minute breakdown on that one. And it's been 
quite good for Intuit. Um, they're also up more than 70% over the past year. And I would expect them to do well, especially in, in the short term. If nothing else, I got tax season coming in April. Okay, so worst case scenario, I'm probably buying what I think would be a quote unquote low point. And then come tax season, I guess April, May, June, June we come back and reevaluate. Maybe we keep it. Depends on what goes on, right? I, I, because I can't predict the future, I go ahead and set these dates in advance to say, look, I'm going to go back, open the books, see if things are going to improve or have they improved, or is this a time to exit if things don't look like they'll improve? And I talked about this with T-Mobile where I said, look, yeah, I made my money. I don't think it's going to go well. And then T-Mobile fell off after that. So those are the two new players into it and PLD and I got rid of Disney and Square. That's in the public portfolio. I also had a bit of Square in my IRA, which really hurts because how dare you lose my retirement money. Um, so I got rid of Square there and actually replaced it with Accenture, which is ticker symbol ACN. I would love to do a deeper dive into this company. So feel free if you want to learn more about that one, let me know in the comments, but I'll put the chart here um, so you can learn, you know, kind of see how well Accenture has done. There are they are a consulting company, so they help companies get better at technology, figure out their issues, so on and so forth. Um, I, I don't think I knew that they were public, but they are obviously, and they've been they've been doing quite well. And I, that's, that's a weird niche space that I don't see is, is something that's trendy, which is good because we already know or expect rather. Um, Bank of America came out and said this, where they think that energy is going to do well in 2022, but that's volatile. So eh, it's really volatile. They also think that um, banking is going to do well in 2022, which is is what I said, right? But what if what if we're wrong? What if energy does the exact opposite of what it did in 2021? That's that's it. That's just the nature of a lot of these energy companies, including Chevron and, and Exxon Mobil and a lot of them. So, you know, we'll talk more about those. But that one is a little iffy for me. I do think finances, financial companies will be good. I think REITs might continue to do well. And a company like Accenture, which is really kind of this nebulous company that just we do service and consulting. And we're really not involved with finance. We're really not involved with energy. They're kind of in their own bubble. So I'm thinking that that's going to give me a little bit more diversification and continue to perform well. So there is that one. All right, uh, for the kids, I just, I didn't sell, well, I did sell PayPal for my son. We got rid of that. Um, baby girl didn't need to have anything removed, but we did add Thermo Fisher, ticker symbol TMO, and I did add Google for both of them. I don't know why they didn't own Google in the past, but they do now. Uh, so we just added new stocks for them, only sold PayPal. Um, so in this case so far, we've only sold three. We, yeah, that, that was it. We only sold three stocks. That's really not that bad because, again, the way that my strategy works is I sell the losers. If you're good, like an Apple or Microsoft or whatever, you get to stay. You get to stay. And on that point, two companies, Target and Capital One, both of those underperformed in the last six months compared to the S&P 500. A question that y'all ask is, well, at what percent do you sell? At what point do you say, well, um, you know, does it drop 5% and then you sell? Does it drop 10% and then you sell? Not necessarily what I try and do is say, look, this is how the S&P 500 did during the same time frame. So last six months or last year, depending on how long I've held it. So I've held, uh, I bought Target six months ago and Target was down like 3% or so in the last six months. S&P 500 did better than that, a lot better than that in the last six months. So I look at that and say, okay, well, what do I expect for the future? In the case of Capital One, both Capital One and Target, both of which I'm down currently and both which I just got the last six months, I want to let them ride for an entire year. Target is Target. I mean, Target is a good quality company. It's only down, for me anyway, it is only down that 3.5%. But I'm going to give it an entire year and come back and reevaluate then because I expect, right, I expect people to still spend money at Target. That's number one. But also, once we figure out how well, which I think they did well, but how well uh, the retail market was in this season, so the you know the end of this year, the holiday shopping season, I think that will start to reflect at some point in early 2022. So I'm going to hold on to Target. Other thing, too, is because I expect things to go well for financial companies. I already got Capital One. I've been DCAing it into it, and since it's fallen, since I've gotten it, I am likely getting that best price or getting what we think to be a low price. When and if interest rates go up, they sell credit cards, they do auto loans. If the supply chain gets better and we have more cars out there, they're going to do more auto loans. I think 
I think I'm still in a good spot here. We will reevaluate in a year, or rather, we're going to reevaluate in June, at which point I would have had it for an entire year. So when that day comes, I will come back, see if we were right, see if things improved for Capital One. But I'm going to allow them, I'm going to give them a grace period of another six months, and then come back and reevaluate at that one year point. In either case, if I gain and I sell, then you know we talked about the tax implications there. If I lose and I sell, again, check out yesterday's video on the tax side of those things, assuming that we gain or assuming that we lose or assuming that we even get rid of it because we'll, we'll see, right? We'll see how things go in 2022 for those two companies. But those were down. Those were currently, at least for me, at the time that I got them, they are down, but I am gonna hold on to those. All right. Um, so other questions that people are asking, because I posted this a little, posted a, some version of this on TikTok and on Instagram. So number one is, well, are you afraid of, of investing on something, investing in something that's at an all-time high? Like, aren't you supposed to buy low and sell high? You know, it's, it's already up 70 some odd percent. Do you think it's going to continue to do that? I'm not going to put a number on it, but remember, what you think is high now is probably not going to be what is high two years from now. And a great example of this year, when we hit an all-time high in January of 2021, we hit an all-time high 70 times through the entire year. So every time, oh, it's all-time high, I don't want to invest now, then they did it again and again and again and again and again. And it just continued throughout throughout the year, which is the most time since 1995. I'm not here to tell you that it is going to do the exact same thing in 2022. I don't know. There are a lot of things to be concerned about. I'm not calling a recession. I'm just saying I don't think it's going to be like this year. And every year is different. That's, that's all I can say. Could it be up? Probably. Will it be up the exact same percent? I guarantee you won't be up the exact same percent. It could be better. It could be worse. We'll see. Um, but my, my case though is think of it like this. Um, so I'm actually, I pulled up some numbers for Apple in 2019, Apple was up 86%. You and me could have thought, well, it's up 86%. There's no way that's going to do that again. It's got to slow down. It's not going to repeat that. That was 2019, 2020 was up 78%. I'm going to still take that. And then in 2021, it's up 33%. So yes, the growth is somewhat slowing year over year. But 86%, 78 and 33, I'll take that. I'll, I'll take it. I will take that every day of the week. You can slow down again and give me 20% or 25%. I will still take that. That is that's solid. Those are solid gains. And that's just from you know from year to year. If I invested the majority of my money at one point from DCA, those numbers are gonna be a bit different. But I'm sticking with it until something changes. And that's not a guarantee for what's gonna happen for 2022. Now I don't expect Apple to fall off. I didn't expect Amazon to fall off and only give me four or five percent, but hey, right? So we'll we'll see how that goes. Um, for Intuit, to give you context there, Intuit was up 35% in 2019. It was low then. I didn't know about Intuit back in 2019. It was up 144% for 2020. I could have said, hey, it's up 144%. You know, it, it's too high. It's not, it's not for me. And then it's up another 72% in 2021. Okay, so that's not, again, to say that's going to be up anywhere near this in 2022, but I expect things to go well for the company. All right, so that is just the, you know, the moves that we made. It really wasn't that many because, again, if it's good, I'm going to keep it. I'm going to hold it for the long term because that's my that's, that's process. If it ain't good, then I'm going to get rid of it. Or if it's not good for me right now, then I'm going to get rid of, rid of it. So uh, picked up into it, picked up Accenture. Um, picked up Thermo Fisher as well as Google. I think that was all of them. Prologis, PLD, we picked that picked that up. We switched out for Disney and Square and we got out of PayPal for my son. Those are only stocks that we sold. We didn't really need to get rid of too many other things. And I mean, that's, that's it. That's it. So hopefully these do well. We'll come back in June and we'll say, look, Here's what, here's what happened, um, here's what you might want to consider, and here's how the market has changed, and then we'll make those decisions from there. Um, as always, make sure that you hit the like and subscribe button because 
we're gonna be talking about this all year long, right? Um, I do want to talk about a few energy stocks because that is the the space that is expected to do well. Healthcare is expected to do well. Um, that was a third area that Bank of America said that they think is is going to to have significant growth. So Thermo Fisher kind of falls in there. Danaher, DHR is a company I've held for a good little bit now that's really paid off. Um, that's one we kept because it's still doing well. So that's one you can look into. Um, Pfizer is out there. Moderna is still out there. We'll see, right? Um, so if you want more in-depth breakdowns, pick any of the companies I just mentioned, and we'll feel free, we will free, feel free to do that. And if you are part of the Cram Sessions, that is my, uh, I pick two stocks every single month. We do a very, very deep dive into it using the Cram method. It was a, a method I created to really evaluate companies and choose those who are poised to do well. That is only $250 a, a year, the entire year. That's it. So that link is below. Hope to see you in the cram sessions and we will release that video either tomorrow, which will be Saturday. Football's on now. So I'm, you know, kind of orienting my days. Um, but that, that video will be out this weekend with two new companies for you to evaluate, understand, and maybe invest. All right. That's it for me. Talk to you guys later. Bye.